Good evening. It's seven o'clock. We're going to get the meeting started. I'll just give a couple minutes for a few people coming in to sit. All right, it's seven o'clock, so we'll open this annual town meeting in here. And um, I just wanna say the resolution is available outside the auditorium when you first walk in, as well as the warning. And the warning was published in the Harper Current on April 4th. And I would like to ask for a motion to um, waive the, the reading of the minutes for tonight. And a second. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay, thank you. And then at this time, I'd like to ask for a nomination for head moderator for tonight's meeting. Thank you. Second, all in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. All right, I will hand it over to Chris Hoheb. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for selecting me as moderator of this annual town meeting. Before we begin by discussing the procedures, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance led by our mayor, C.J. Thomas. Thank you. Okay, I'll now describe tonight's procedures. Can you hear me okay in that corner? Can you hear me back there? Thumbs up, that's a good sign. Okay, your decision tonight on the town's operating budget for 2023-2024 is not final until approved or rejected by voters at the polls on April 27, 2023. Please note that voters in the referendum cannot change the budget on April 27th, they can either vote yes or no. If a majority of those on April 27th reject the budget and the number of those voting equals at least 15% of the number of registered electors, the town council will recommend a second budget, which must be lower than the prior rejected budget. A second town meeting and a second referendum is required. If the second recommended budget is rejected at the referendum, the council shall meet and shall adopt, shall adopt a budget for the upcoming fiscal year, which shall be lower than the second recommended budget. Tonight at this meeting, provided that there are at least 300 voters, not tonight, I don't think, you may collectively increase, decrease, or authorize an additional appropriation that is not in the recommended budget presented. Any increase, decrease, or addition of an appropriation shall require the affirmative vote of at least two thirds majority of the voters voting on such item. Again, that's provided that there are at least 300 voters voting on the item. Any amendment shall recommend the amounts by which one or more specific appropriations identified by account number or similar designation may be increased or decreased to equal the total amount of the increase or decrease. The recommended budget reflecting any such increases, decreases, or an addition of an appropriation that is not in the recommended budget shall be submitted to a referendum. So for tonight, we have five items to discuss. First is that the town report for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2022 be approved. We'll take that up in several minutes. That the, the next is that the budget recommended by the town council for the fiscal year commencing July 1st 2023 be approved. That number three is that the town of Farmington appropriate $4 million for costs related to repairs and reconstruction of various town roads and drainage systems. And then next, that the town of Farmington appropriate 16 million for the renovation of the 1928 building. Authorize the use of $7 million of American Rescue Plan Act funds to finance a portion of the appropriation and authorize the issuance of $9 million in bonds and notes to finance the remaining portion of the project. 
And then the last is to consider and act upon any other business which may properly come before said meeting. We will consider each item separately to place each of these items before you. I'll call for a motion in a second. It will then, I'll then ask the appropriate town official or officials to describe the item for informational purposes. I will recognize anyone who wishes to speak on the motion before us. If you wish to speak, please go to one of the microphones that you see in the aisle, identify yourself, state your address for the record. And I ask that you keep your comments to the agenda topic that's uh, currently being discussed. And I mention that because we have a uh, perhaps a little overlapping or confusion about uh, the first, the second motion, which is our overall budget going forward, and then the appro appropriation of 16 million for the renovation. They're two separate matters. So uh, I just want to assure everyone we will get to the uh, appropriation of 16 million. It's later in the evening. Uh, if you have a question, please direct the question to me as moderator and indicate whom you would like to answer it. Please confine your questions to the topic under discussion and do not enter into a debate. If the comment or question is not germane to the topic, I may rule it out of order. Okay. At the conclusion of uh, tonight's meeting, I will seek a motion to adjourn to a referendum to be held at the regular polling places on April 27th, 2023, between the hours of 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. Okay, so the first motion. Uh, may, I, may I have a motion to move the first item contained in the warning that the town report for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2022 be approved. Is there a motion? Moved, second. Second, I see a second, thank you. Uh, any discussion, questions? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, next. May I please have a motion to move the second item contained in the warning that the budget recommended by the town council for the fiscal year commencing July 1, 2023 be approved. Motion. Second. Thank you. I'll, I now call upon CJ Thomas, chair of the town council, Kathleen Blonsky, town manager, and Kathleen Greeter, superintendent of schools to begin the presentation. Thank you, Chris. And good evening and welcome everyone to our 2023 annual town meeting. Uh, the decisions that the town council made pertaining to the budget were based on several factors. The town strategic plan, the seven year capital plan, long-term financial forecasts, the current economic climate, and lastly, the state mandated revaluation. State law requires townwide revaluation every five years to equalize assessments at a common level so that all property owners pay what the state feels is their fair share of the tax burden. The result of our revaluation is that the grand list increased by 18.42% and real estate property grew by 20.54%. This actually shows the strength of the Farmington market. Uh, those people who see a large increase in their property value will see a tax increase based solely on the state mandated revaluation. To mitigate the impact of this revaluation on taxpayers, the town council's recommended budget had a 0% change or a $0 increase in expenditures over last year's budget. As a result, again, any tax increase is not the result of increased spending, but is solely driven by the revaluation. The town council strives to keep taxes as low as possible while maintaining excellent services. Leading up to this year's budget proposal, uh, the past three years, we've seen a tax increase average of 1.6% and an average expenditure increase of 2.84%. If this budget passes, our four-year average expenditure increase will be 2.13%. With this budget, 
The mill rate would decrease from 29.32 mills to 24.21. Most taxpayers will be able to see a decrease in their car taxes, which may offset some of the tax increases for the year. A tax calculator is val uh, available on the town website uh, under the town budget page. You can put in the value of your home, the value of your cars to get an individualized impact on this property tax, uh, the proposed tax increase rate. Also, the, deal, uh, the decrease in our mill rate reaffirms our status as holding one of the lowest mill rates in the region. This slide shows the Farmington's current mill rate as compared to other Farmington Valley towns. With our mill rate decreasing point uh, to 24.21, we will still be low the other towns. And as you see, we're just widening the gap between Farmington and the next closest town. Uh, the uh, next slide shows the Farmington current mill rate as compared to some of the other surrounding towns. Right now, we are the fifth lowest with Windsor Locks, uh, Heartland, Suffield, and Southington having lower rates than us currently. With our mill rate decreasing to 24.21, we should be the lowest as none of the four towns in front of us are going through a revaluation this year. The annual town meeting, will be adjourned to a referendum vote on April 27th. Polls will be open from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Absentee ballots will be available in the town clerk's office beginning tomorrow, April 18th, 2023. I will now turn the presentation over to Kathy Blonsky, our town manager, and the Board of Education who will present their details on this budget. Good evening. Members of the public, I present for your review the Town Council's recommended budget for fiscal year 23-24. This year is a very difficult budget year due to inflation and extremely high utility costs. In addition, the Town has recently completed the state-mandated townwide revaluation of all real property. Because of this revaluation, there will be a large shift in the tax burden from commercial taxpayers to residential taxpayers. The Town has not seen this type of shift in value in 15 years. For that reason, this budget includes three strategies that will lessen next year's tax impact without significantly reducing the service levels that our residents expect. Number one, reduction of town and board of education expenditures. The town budget is 1.97% increase and the board of education is a 2% increase above last year's appropriation. Fixed cost and current market, market conditions drive expenditures more than a 2% increase above current appropriations. Therefore, reductions were necessary to both the town and board of education budgets. Due to the revaluation, even if the expenditure stayed constant, it would result in a 12.25% tax increase built into the budget. For that reason, the town council felt it was essential to keep the overall expenditures flat. This proposed budget shows a 0% increase above the current year's budget. Two, decreased capital funding levels. The capital budget has been reduced 74%. Although deferring maintenance should never become a standard practice, deferring capital expenses for one year will not have a significant long-term negative impact. Three, use of fund balance. An adequate fund balance must be maintained to allow the town to continue to meet its obligations in the event of an economic downturn or an unexpected emergency. The town fund balance policy states that the town shall maintain a general fund balance equal to a minimum of 10% with a targeted maximum of 15%. The town has worked hard to increase our fund balance and our current and it, currently the fund is at 16.4%. This budget appropriates 1.2 million from the fund balance as a revenue line item. Even with this appropriation, we are still within our policy guidelines. Expenditures. I will now review the expenditure portion of the budget. The total recommended budget for fiscal year 23-24 is $121,266,233, an increase of $0 or 0% above the current budget. The town operations. The town operations are broken into five categories, general administration, public safety, public works, community and recreation, and other. The general administration group of accounts has decreased 0.74%. 
The public safety group of accounts has increased 2.44%. The public works group of accounts has decreased 0.41%. The community and recreation group of accounts has increased 2.39%. And the other group of accounts has increased 4.93%. The town budget is $34,039,268, an increase of $658,948, or 1.97% above the current expenditures. Highlights of the town budget include the following. There is a reduction of two full-time positions, the building maintenance foreman position in the highway department and the AutoCAD specialist in the engineering uh, division both have been eliminated. There is no seasonal summer help funded in the highway department. These seasonal employees enabled the highway division to complete more ground maintenance tasks during the busy summer months. There is no seasonal help funded in the police department. There were seasonal employees hired during the summer months to patrol the various walking trails and parks throughout town. A Westwood seasonal golf course position has been eliminated. Historically, there have been two Westwood seasonal employees. This budget funds only one seasonal employee. A vacant part-time building inspector position has been eliminated. Townwide technical equipment and current expense accounts are flat or reduced. Utility accounts have increased an average of 11.12%, with heating fuel up 18% and electricity up 28%. Town expenditure by object. I've also separated the budget by object, which includes salaries, benefits, supplies, equipment, contractual, and utilities. The increases and decreases for each of the objects are as follows. Salaries has increased 0.08%. Benefits has increased 5.04%. Supplies has decreased 0.86%. Equipment has decreased 18.57%. Contractual has increased 1.21%. Utilities increased 11.12%. The recommended town general fund appropriation is $34,039,268, which is a 1.97% increase above the current budget. Debt. The debt group of accounts includes appropriations to make principal and interest payments on the town's long-term debt obligations. The total amount recommended for next fiscal year is $9,964,743. This is an increase of $658,087 or 7.07%. Special services. The refuse collection budget includes the cost of collecting and disposing of solid bulky hazardous waste generated by town residents and the town's landfill operation. This budget proposes no rate increase. The annual fee will be $268 per household. Capital improvements. The town capital budget has been reduced. Over the last 10 years, the town council has made a con conscious effort to fund the capital budget to the levels established by our capital funding policy. Seven out of the last 10 years, the town has met or exceeded the capital policy recommendations and has made considerable investment in large capital projects. These projects, which have included a new high school, an upgraded water pollution control plant, fire apparatus, road improvements, and elementary school improvements have been supported by the taxpayer. Deferring maintenance should not become the standard practice, but it will be necessary this year because of the significant increase in residential real estate values. The proposed general fund appropriation to support the first year of the capital improvement plan is $1 million. This is a reduction of 2,881,000 or 74.23%. Listed on the screen is the capital projects proposed to be funded by the general fund. Next on the screen is the list of capital projects proposed to be funded by other funding sources and not through the general fund or taxpayer dollars. These funding sources include federal dollars, state dollars, and user fees. Next, the first year of the capital plan proposes bonding for the 1928 building to be renovated into the new town hall. The town council set a total project cost of $16 million for the 1928 building renovation. This capital plan includes $7 million in American Rescue Plan Act ARPA funds for the 1928 building project. This would bring the cost of the project to the Farmington taxpayers to $9 million. The road reconstruction question is for $4 million is also proposed. The town has a history of success with Rose road bonds. Expenditure summary. The total recommended budget for the fiscal year 23-24 is $121,266,233, an increase of $0 or 0% above the current budget. I will now call on Kathy Greeter, Superintendent of Schools, to present the Board of Education budget. Thank you.
Thank you, Kathy. Uh, good evening to the Board of Education and Town Coun Council members uh, and those Farmington community members who are here attending in person and those watching virtually. The budget development process in Farmington is grounded in our strategic improvement documents each year. Our mission, vision of the global citizen, the framework for teaching and learning, which is our instructional model and our core beliefs, as well as our theory of action and equity framework. From initial school submissions to the refinement of our operating budget through school and program reviews of all requests, zero-based budgeting practices were utilized. In addition, we were mindful about the need to offset costs in this budget due to the economy, as well as increased student need due to the impact of the pandemic. Thus, we utilized federal ESSER III ARP grant funding and other grant funding sources as we develop the 2023-2024 operating budget. This slide shows Farmington's mission statement, which promotes personal and academic excellence for all students, as well as the acquisition of the skills and dispositions outlined within our vision of the global citizen, which reflect the foundation of the 2023-2024 budget. This slide provides an overview of the recommended operating budget for the 23-24 school year. The total budget amount is $75,937,222 with an increase of $1,488,964 or a percent increase over the 2022-2023 budget of 2%. The rankings listed on this slide are statewide, including all school districts with one spending the most and 166 spending the least. It is important to note that Farmington ranks 112 in the most up-to-date per pupil expenditure reported by the Connecticut State Department of Education as compared to all other Connecticut school districts, which is $2,170 less per pupil than the state per pupil average this year, if our per pupil expenditure was the same as the state average, our budget would be over $8 million more. It is important to note that over $1.6 million has been reduced from this budget, including staffing, reductions in accounts across the entire budget, equipment and facility projects from initial budget submissions to this point in the budget process to arrive at the 2% increase over the 2022-2023 Board of Education's budget. The first budget driver is salaries, the 100 series. The budget increase and in the salary line is 2.09% overall. This ser series reflects all of our association's contractual salary increases for the coming year, which are highlighted on this slide. The next budget driver is insurance, or the 200 series, with a negative 0.33% decrease overall. This account provides for 100% of expected paid claims and for the administration of employee health insurance. Services is the next budget driver, the 300 series. There is an increase of an overall 3.46% in the services series, driven by increased student need, state and federal requirements, and increases in contractual obligations across many areas of the budget due to the economy. The next series is the supplies or the 400 series. The supply series reflects a 4.77% increase overall due to the economy and increased costs across all areas of the supplies account. These are required costs that are needed to run our daily operations, as well as supplies for educational delivery for over 4,000 students projected to attend our schools in the 2023-2024 school year. The 500 series or equipment reflects an overall increase of $19,087 or a percent increase of 5.27% due to a modified phased approach to moving equipment off grant funding to the operating budget as we plan for the end of ESSER funding in the summer of 2024. Dues and fees or the 600 series shows a $25,722 increase or a percent increase of 10.05%. This account includes memberships in organizations that support our strategic improvement efforts. This account also includes the Town of Farmington's negotiated liability umbrella and motor vehicle insurance for the school district. 
The increase is due to the negotiated um, and contractual liability umbrella and motor vehicle insurance. Here is a view of the entire Board of Education's recommended operating budget for the 2023-2024 school year, all of which I've reviewed within this budget presentation. At all times, our strategic improvement efforts and our financial plan, the 2023-2024 budget, are cent centered upon our students, their needs, and their future as self-aware individuals, empowered learners, disciplined thinkers, engaged collaborators, and civic-minded contributors. The school district's capital budget is outlined on this slide. The capital budget request for the Board of Education has been reduced to $500,000 for technology infrastructure, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, school security, and school code and safety. Thank you for your attention to this presentation. The grand list is broken down into three categories, real estate, personal property, and motor vehicles. The real estate account shows a 20.54% increase. The personal property account shows a 9.42% increase, and the motor vehicle account shows a 3.25% increase. As, dis as discussed earlier, state law requires townwide revaluation every five years. A revaluation is the process of verifying property data, analyzing economic data, and then appraising all town real estate at a common point in time. The purpose is to equalize assessments at a common level so that all all property owners pay their fair share of the property tax burden. The last revaluation was as, was as of October 1st, 2017, and the market has changed at different rates from different kinds of property since then. The property reevaluation will reflect the market as of October 1st, 2022. The result of this revaluation is that the grand list increased by 18.42% or $699,408,112. Real estate grew by 20.54%, which shows the strength of the Farmington market. Revenues. I've broken down the revenues into nine categories. Other property taxes, license and permits, fines and penalties, interest, grants, service charges, others, Westwood's contribution, and fund balance. In summary, projected non-tax revenues are $13,864,037, or a 21.43% increase above the current year. Proposed tax and mill rate. The proposed general fund budget will require a property tax rate of 24.21 mills, a decrease of 5.11 mills. In other words, $100,000 of assessed value equals $2,421 in taxes. Based on a tax rate of 24.21 mills, the average residential assessment will see a tax increase of 9.75% increase or an increase of $648.09 in their taxes. In conclusion, this year's budget has been made difficult by several factors, but primarily by the state mandated revaluation. One of the town council strategies to help mitigate this tax increase included keeping expenditures flat. This has been accomplished without drastically impacting services to our residents. Even though the, the proposed tax increase is significant, it is driven solely by revaluation rather than expenditures. Due to the revaluation, real estate values increased while the mill rate decreased. The reduction in the mill rate will lower the taxes that, re that a resident will pay on their motor vehicles, which may offset, to some extent, the increase in total taxes. The Town Council's budget includes mitigation strategies that allows us to continue with sound financial policies and best practices. The results will not produce long-term negative impacts on our service levels or our financial positions. The townwide referendum is Thursday, April 27th at your usual location. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, before we uh, open up to questions or comments, can one of the registrars hear me and report on our attendance for this evening? Or in the alternative, if somebody's in that back corner, can you open the door and yell, Registrar! It worked. The count is 50. 50. Thank you very much. So 
250 short of our quorum of 300. So there'll be no amendments uh, regarding the proposed budget. I'll now open up the floor to any questions or comments, reminding folks to find their way to a microphone, a microphone, I'm sorry, microphone over here, right here, state your name and your address and we're ready. Okay, once, oh, okay, yes, sir. Excuse me, uh, P Pierre Gurton, 12 Henley Commons, Farmington. I, I just wanna make a couple comments on the budget. I applaud the council and town leadership for working collaboratively to try to find a bit of a solution to to hold off some of the tax increases. But if you have an average assessed home of 300,000, which is the average for the town, your taxes are going up 10% with this budget. Um, for others who've had their homes assessments increase substantially more, um, your taxes are going up, in my case, 25%. Um, the concern I have is while we have low taxes, there's no looking past the fact that we've had a major shift in the tax burden, not only for the operating budget, but for the capital budget, for all the stuff we've bonded, okay, the the wastewater treatment facility is 60 million, the $150 million high school, okay? There's more of that that's gonna be borne by the citizens. Um, and I think that th the challenge will be even greater next year and the year after. It's disappointing to hear the stuff that had to be taken out because it's, in Farmington, I think we felt that the services have just been right. There isn't a situation where you know, we said, oh, we didn't need that or we didn't need that. We've been fairly lean. But next year's going to be tough. You can't keep taking from the rainy day fund. You're not going to have the federal grants that are offsetting some of the Board of Ed budget. Okay. And you're going to start seeing the debt for the high school. You saw the debt service there, $9 million a year. That is going to double to $18 million and change once the high school bonds have been issued. So in the next 18 months or so, okay? So just keep that in your mind. I'm not trying to scare people, but the next several years, particularly if we have a recession, we continue to see inflation in our household budgets, this is not gonna be easy. Many of us can afford it, but we have many who have limited financial capabilities and fixed incomes, and we need to be mindful of that as a community. Thank you. Yes, sir, thank you. Someone else. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. My name is Jacqueline Zink. I live at 72 Lovely Street in Unionville, um, Connecticut. This is a question about whether to um, pose a statement. I have a question regarding um, the intersection between 177, where Claudette says it's five points. Uh, um, I heard the town manager speak about um, the roadways, and so I'm not sure if this question falls under this current town budget or the $4 million um, next part that we'll discuss. May I just well, have some clarity on that? Yeah, no, why don't we ask the question, and okay. then we'll, we'll take it from there. Great. So um, I am a mother of two toddlers, and we have a thriving neighborhood um, at the corner of Lovely and Sylvan Street. Um, we have 21 children in that short little segment. The day that we looked to buy a home in this community, one of our neighbors was hit by a car crossing Lovely Street. Um, and so one of the neighbors who was unfortunately um, not able to be here went to the police department, spoke with us, Officer Frank, who's been wonderful, um, Russ, the engineer, everyone has been wonderful in, in, in responding to us. But we were also told that um, what we were asking for, which is a flashing light, several cars from that time when we purchased in October of 2021, we've had three cars up on our lawn avoiding hitting people. We've almost been hit. Um, and so we'd like to know if that could potentially remain in the budget just to have a flashing light crossing that street. And the second part of that 
is if you are leaving Claudette's clippings, so I'm if I could see a head nod that you know where, where we're talking about at the five points, the old fire station is to the left. If I'm facing Dunkin' Donuts, there is a, um, a crosswalk. Many of the moms, we take walks together. We love um, the walkways and the ability to ride in Farmington. But when you step off of the sidewalk, there's no way to enter the crosswalk. So it, it is, go ahead. It, there is um, a curb there. So we have to walk into oncoming traffic to enter the crosswalk, to push the button to cross the street. So I, I don't know if that question is here. It's, or... it's probably not a budget question, but if the town manager wants to speak about it, and perhaps direct you to the correct answer maybe after this meeting? Well, we did get a, we got a response that it may be cut from the budget, which is why we, some oh, of us okay. showed up today. Well, here we go. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, Lovely Street, as you know, is a state road. Correct. So I don't know where um, the information is about being cut from the budget, but I will definitely look into it for you and find out. It, it's not a budgetary issue in my mind. It would be more about if the state allows us to put the light in and some of the different things that go with the state because it is a state road. And your second question, I think, is the same thing. But we do have the traffic review board, and I'll make sure I look back at it. And if you want to maybe just Leave your name with Maureen sure. uh, and uh, I'll make sure I get back to sure, you. Sure. Thank you. We did talk to the state and the state sent us back to you all. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, Robert Parker, 22 Tanglewood Road. Um, good I evening. Would Good evening. I would like to re reiterate what uh, Mr. Girton said. So I'm going to repeat a little bit of what he said. Um, I understand the town has done a very good job holding uh, the budget to the same dollar figure, and that obviously is going to help. However, with the revaluation and the average homeowner's taxes going up almost $700 this year, that is just too much money for the average household to consume. That's a lot of money in one year. Okay. With all the prices going up, utilities, gas, food, this is just too much for people to bear. There needs to be more consideration into the average citizen and what they're paying. Um, but also the biggest thing that concerns me, and I said this in a January town meeting, and I'm going to say it again. This town is spending money like a college kid on spring bank break with their parents' credit card. We have to stop spending huge amounts of money on projects that we don't really need. The $16 million for the 1928 building is just out of control. Um, we haven't even started spending uh, paying for the high school. That's going to add money to it. This year, the capital expenditures, from what I understand, were cut tremendously. Um, so we're not putting money into maintaining our town as we should. There are other projects I heard coming down the road with the elementary schools and the other um, town buildings that are going to have to need to be redressed, addressed because you can't not maintain buildings because they just fall apart. Um, that being said, I think the budget should be approved. I think the money for the 1928 building should be rejected and addressed in another way. I would rather make a small mistake now and readdress the issue than make a bigger mistake spending $16 million. And the $7 million of federal funds that we can use, half of that should go into the capital expenditures. The other half should go to help the residents, you should go to the overall budget to help the residents cope with the $700 average tax increase this year. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Parker, we'll have a more full discussion about the school in just a few minutes. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? Tim Kelly, 62 Westview. Yes, sir. Um, 
Good evening. I just want to thank the town council for the hard work they've done to deliver a flat year to year budget. I know that's not an easy thing to do. And there are a lot of demands on the council from uh, various areas of the town. Uh, so absolutely the right thing to do. And uh, I support that. I think the majority of folks uh, will as well. Um, I'm not going to get up again when they talk about the 1928 building. Uh, but I would say if, if it does not pass, I would personally uh, think that we should take the majority of that ARPA funding, uh, the $7 million COVID relief money, and apply it towards uh, prioritized uh, equipment and uh, facility needs in our uh, school district. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Once, twice. Yes. Last call. Ooh. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Dana Miller, uh, 221 Main Street, Unionville. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you for keeping the expenditures the same as the previous year. Um, however, I have a question. Um, the <clears throat> assessment uh, has gone up this reeval, but it also went up a lot the previous reeval also. So that's for the past 10 years now. Uh, over a 10-year period, uh, our assessment's gone up a lot and not just 10%. I left all my figures home, uh, but it, it went up substantial. I, if I recall, uh, around 40% one year, and this year I think it went up around 30%. That's just for me. So, um, I don't see anything on here for the assessment of commercial property in town. Has that been reavowed this year too, or does that never get reavowed, or how does that work? Okay. okay. It did. So, what were the results? Uh, did that go up or down? Okay, so that's why the shift, the burden is to the residents. Okay. So that would explain the $648, because if everybody went up on the reval, then our taxes should be the same dollar amount pretty much as last year, because your expenditures are the same and your revenue is, is up. So your tax levy is down. So all that looks correct. But when I saw the 648, it didn't make sense because there was no reference to the commercial uh, reassessment. And then as far as the uh, high school or the 128 building, uh, it was my understanding from previous meetings that the school, the town wanted to keep the this area for the high school kids only. They didn't want to have to relocate the students to another piece of property in town. So by making the 128 building for office spaces or town offices or whatever, if anything but for classrooms, you're defeating your original plan. Now the brand new school may be fine for when it's brand new, but in five to 10 years, you're not, it's not gonna be big enough because you got a lot of people coming into Farmington because you're ranked one of the best schools in the country. And now that you got a brand new school, they want to come here. Oh, we got a brand new school too. So, so you're inviting a lot of people coming in and it's just going to increase the burden. And so if that does happen, like I'm predicting, then in five to 10 years, that new school is not going to be big enough. And if you already obligated the 128 building, to office spaces, you have no place to put the extra kids. Now, you still got the 900 building, but from what I heard, you got mildew problems in there and because of the leaky roof. And originally, it could have been a two or three story building, but you only went one story. And that's the case with all the additions to this school for the past 70 years. So you guys weren't responsible for those decisions 70 years ago. However, after the first building, 
every edition was one story, which it ate up your, your footprint. And that's why we're in the position we are now the past few years. And that's why you're building a new school over in the, the, the ball field. But you've already used up your full, your full footprint over there. So as soon as that school is not big enough, you have nowhere to go. And if you use the 128 for other purposes other than classrooms, what are you going to do? Send the kids to another location? And if you don't do that, just having, them, having the new building, the 900 building, and the 128 building, let's say you do that scenario, you're having more like a college campus versus a school grounds. Because at one of the meetings, I recall, the purpose was to keep all the kids in one area. It certainly is easier for security, I'll tell you that. And, you know, everybody's concerned about the safety of their children. And I understand that. So, so anyway, can you elaborate on any of that? Thank you, sir. I will incorporate your comments when we get to the 1928 building discussion, if you don't mind. I, oh, you're going to do that soon. That's right. I'm hoping to. Yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone, will, anyone else wish to be heard regarding the budget? Recognizing we're going to come back to the 1928 building in a few minutes. Anyone else? Once, twice, last call. Um, so, you know, we, at the conclusion of tonight's meeting, we'll adjourn this budget to uh, April 27th. Do I have that correct? April 27th. No one's standing up and shouting, so I'm presuming that it is. So if you don't mind, I'm going to move to the next matter. Okay. Many notes. Can't read my handwriting. Okay. Next, may I? Please have a motion to move the fifth item contained in the warning that the town of Farmington appropriate four million for costs related to repairs and reconstruction of various town roads and drainage systems. Do I have a motion? And a second. Thank you very much. I now call upon Kathy Blonsky to begin the presentation and then we'll take comments and questions from the audience. Thank you. Referendum uh, question two will cover the subject of town road repairs and improvements. Each year, the Department of Public Works conducts a complete inventory of every street in Farmington and Unionville. Based on these findings, specific road repairs are then recommended and additional improvements are prioritized in the most economically efficient order. The following roads are slated to be improved from 23 through 27. These projects include milling, paving, catch basin repairs, and drainage improvements. Please note that this list is subject to adjustments based on funding, state and utility slated improvements, and scheduling. If approved, question two shall read, shall the town of Farmington appropriate $4 million for repair to and reconstruction of various town roads and drainage systems and authorize the issuance of bonds and notes in the same amount to finance said appropriation? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone wish to be heard on roads? Come on, it's a barn burner. No, nobody? Uh, any, any, any comments, any questions on the appropriation of $4 million for costs related to repairs and reconstruction of various town roads and drainage systems? Once, twice, okay. Nothing further? All right, I'm gonna move on to the next motion. May I have a motion uh, to move the sixth item contained in the warning that the town of Farmington appropriate 16 million for the renovation of the 1928 building, authorize the use of $7 million of American Rescue Plan, Plan Act funds to finance a portion of the appropriation and authorize the issuance of $9 million in bonds and notes to finance the remaining portion of the project. I now call upon Kathleen Blonsky, town manager, to begin the presentation. Thank you. Peter, Master Batista.
Good evening, everyone. My name is Peter Master Batista. I'm the chairperson of the 1928 uh, Building Committee. Thank you for all for attending this evening. Um, I will be introducing all of our board members here, and then after that, um, Kathy Blonsky, our town manager and project manager or project architect, Chris Nardi, will be available for questions also. Uh, I just want to mention our committee members, uh, myself as chairperson, Gene Barron, resident, um, uh, Joe Capitaferro, the liaison to the council, uh, Chris Fagan, the liaison to the Farmington High School project, uh, Jack Kemper, resident, Dan Kleiman, resident, and Mike Walsh, resident. Um, since we've been charged with this committee since May 2022, I appreciate all the hard work that this group has done on this project. Uh, we felt we've done a very good job and hopefully a lot to come. Um, now I'd like to uh, hand over the presentation to Kathy and Chris. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. Um, this project includes the renovation of the 1928 section of the Farmington High School building to be used for town offices. The existing town hall will become the town hall annex for community use, i.e. the food bank, social service programs, additional town storage, and an expanded regional probate court. As a result of a successful referendum, a new Farmington High School is being constructed adjacent to the existing high school. As part of that project, the majority of the existing high school is slated to be demolished in the summer of 2024. The 1928 section of the existing high school is considered a landmark by many residents and visitors to Farmington. For that reason, a townwide survey was conducted in the spring of 2022 to determine if there was support from the community to retain the 1928 building. The results of the survey indicated 77.8% of the respondents supported retaining the 1928 building. During their discussions, the town council determined that this project should be done in conjunction with the new Farmington High School project for several reasons. First, when the existing high school is demolished in the summer of 2024, two of the four walls of the 1928 building will be exposed to outside elements and need of masonry repairs and restoration. If the town does not undertake the project in conjunction with the demolition of the existing high school, the town would need to build temporary walls and make stru structural modifications, which would be costly and would eventually need to be removed for permanent walls. Second, using the $7 million in ARPA funds would significantly reduce the cost of the project to Farmington taxpayers, but those funds must be committed by December 31st, 2024, or those funds must be returned to the federal government. Lastly, doing this project in conjunction with the new Farmington High School project will result in cost savings and synergies with site work, utility, paving, and landscaping work. It was determined that if the 1928 building is to be saved from a financial and structural standpoint, both projects should be done in conjunction with one another. I will now ask Chris Nardi from uh, Silver Petroselli Associates, our project architect, to review the project design and cost estimates. Good evening, Chris Nardi, Principal and Project Architect with Silver Petroselli and Associates based out of Hamden, Connecticut. I wanna walk you briefly through the proposed floor plans for the 1928 building design. This is the main level of the 1928 building or the ground level. And as a general design approach to this project in conjunction with the 1928 committee, uh, there was a real importance of utilizing just the 28 footprint and the 28 structure as it was originally constructed and has stood since that time period. So other than a small vestibule addition, all of the spaces that I will talk about tonight are contained with that existing shell of the 1928 building. And in addition, as you'll see on all the floor plans, including this floor plan, the gray areas are the existing circulation system, corridors and stairs that exist in the 28 building. So it was a cost conscious design to maintain existing bearing walls, existing stair structures, and we're really just working within 
those existing original building elements to reshape the interior spaces. So in the upper left-hand corner, that purple area is the new lobby and secure vestibule addition. There is a new elevator, an ADA or handicapped accessible elevator in directly adjacent to that lobby. And in terms of departments on this ground floor, we always try uh, to accommodate the public in terms of the department's access most frequently. So the town clerk, the tax collector, the tax assessor, the registrar of voters are all located on this main level. One item to point out is the vault. So we will have a new vault in this building. It's about 40% larger than the current vault in town hall, which is undersized per um, state recommendations and requirements. And through the use of high density file storage, this vault will provide close to double the amount of um, land use and vital record storage than the current vault, you know, to take Farmington well into the future in terms of your town records. If we, the other item to note on this plan are the blue spaces, which are recreational spaces. So utilizing what is the current band room at the high school, uh, that large blue rectangle in the middle, that was originally an auditorium and gymnasium within the 28 building. So that would serve as a multi-purpose space for uh, some youth sports. And in addition, we're able to include two recreational classrooms so that three rec department functions could operate in this building simultaneously. Moving up to the second floor, the large orange bar at the bottom is the development office suite. The green area in the upper right is the IT department. And then we have some town shared functions such as the staff break room. And then the uh, teal color are toilet rooms and we are renovating toilet rooms in the current location. Again, a cost conscious design decision to not move fixtures and piping where it was not necessary. Moving up to the third floor, as you come off the elevator in the upper left-hand corner, the light blue space is a small rec office. The green space adjacent to that is the finance department. The teal color at the bottom is the town manager's suite. And then to the right-hand side, the salmon colored areas are a meeting room and um, some town storage areas. Moving on to the next slide. This is the proposed site plan. The 1928 building in the center of the plan and the dark gray parking areas are modifications that were made following the high school plan. So originally the high school tennis courts, you can see them in a gray tone on the left-hand side of the screen. And those tennis courts um, we're proposing be shifted closer to the high school as we want to create two separate and distinct parking areas for the two different functions. So the parking lot to the left-hand side of the 28 building would be used solely uh, for the 1928 functions and town hall functions. The gray bar of parking at the top of the screen is parking that was shifted from where it's currently designed for the high school to, to move it adjacent to those tennis courts and the total net change in parking for the high school would be no added or reduced spaces, but the town hall spots would all be in addition to the, to the high school spaces. This is a conceptual rendering from the north side of the 28 building, looking back over the tennis courts um, to the back side of our structure. The white roof in the foreground is that small secure lobby vestibule addition. This image is as you'd be coming up Monteith Drive. And if you click once more, Devin, um, really the purpose, the purpose here is to show that we are maintaining the building and also restoring it back to more of its original appearance. So as you would view the building, whether on Route 4 or coming up Monteith, it would appear as it does now with improvements, restoring the cupola, replacing the windows, restoring the side entrances. As you see uh, in these two images, the, the photo 
in the bottom right hand corner is a historical photo of the 28 building shortly after construction. So again, really just trying to reinforce that this building is to be maintained and the history of this building in terms of the exterior envelope is to be maintained. And one item I did want to mention is, although we are maintaining that exterior envelope, um, an item that was included in the design and, and budget is adding insulation into all those exterior walls. So improving the energy efficiency of the walls through insulation, through more energy efficient windows, through LED lighting and new HVAC systems, this will be an energy efficient building when all is said and done. In terms of the estimate, uh, we worked with a third party estimator and the number that came back from that estimate based off the original design was the first blue bar you see at um, just under $16.6 million. We discussed with the town council and the 1928 committee value engineering options. And it was decided at the 28 building committee level to remove close to $500,000 in costs through value engineering. But then we also identified uh, at least a dozen other items that would be taken into consideration as this progresses through design to make sure that we can deliver this project at or under the 16 million that the council approved the 28 committee for. As you can see, the total project budget is $16 million. This will be offset by $7 million in ARPA funds, which brings the cost to the Farmington taxpayers to $9 million. Because of Farmington's ongoing retirement of existing capital projects bonded debt, there will only be two years that the 1928 building project will increase the property tax. For example, a homeowner with the average assessed value of $301,455 is estimated to be $44.96 $44 in total, averaging $8.99 per year for the first five years of the bond. In the remaining years of the bond, there will be no incremental increases to taxes due to the 1928 building debt issue as the required debt service is absorbed by the retirement of old debt. The referendum is anticipated to take place on April 27, 2023. If approved, the design development phase will begin in the summer and progress through the fall. After that phase is complete, the construction document phase will begin and last through the winter. Bidding will take place in the spring of 2024, and once a general contractor is selected, construction will begin in the summer of 2024 and will be complete in the spring of 2025. The referendum question is shown on the screen, and the referendum will be held on April 27, 2023 at your usual polling place. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone in the audience have questions or comments regarding this? Yes, sir. Right here. Gerald Hancock, 5 West Street Terrace, Unionville. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I am voting in favor of the 1928 building referendum for a number of reasons. But one reason has become a prime factor in my decision-making process. And that is, we now live in a culture that first looks to repurpose and reuse an item before discarding it. The same culture can apply to the proposed referendum to reuse, repurpose, and renovate the 1928 building. This building still has a long life 
in serving the residents of the town of Farmington. This proposal is well suited for the intended use and with the applied American Rescue Plan fan, uh, funds, it is a financially sound proposal. The question before us is, as residents, shall we vote to restore, repurpose, and reuse this architecturally significant building, or shall we see it demolished and end up discarded as nothing more than a pile of demolition debris in some landfill somewhere. Unfortunately, these are the only two choices we have before us in this referendum. Should the referendum not pass, the town council has clearly already stated that the 1928 building will be demolished. I want to reiterate the consequences of that to the, our voters. A failed referendum automatically results in the 1928 building being demolished, gone, forever. Please don't let this happen. I urge you all to go to the polls at your polling location on April, April 27th and vote in favor. This magnificent structure has withstood the test of time for nearly 100 years. The proposal and the savings to proceed at this time far outweighs the cost of any future building use that may be required for the same purposes that this proposal has. Might I point out to the citizenry that we can recall some of the defeated proposals in years long ago, maybe not so far as the that, but in the 1990s, we had an opportunity to purchase a building here in town, which could have served as our town hall. Our police department could have been located there, central to the town. It's, it's the Bridgewater complex right across from Toro Loco. For, this, for some of the short-sighted views that may be presented here, it was defeated. And we are now still faced with that proposal. And we did build a necessary FPD and senior center, but at a much increased cost. So why not take the long-term view and make this happen at this time? It's a worthy use of the building. It's a worthy building itself and it's financially sound. It will save us money now in the long-term. I urge you to please go to the polls Talk to your neighbors to seek them to vote as well, and your friends. If you should need an absentee ballot, the town clerk's office will have them available tomorrow. I thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, Don Doobie, 94 Oak Ridge. Before I, I give my comments, I have two questions. Missing from this equation here is one, what would have been, what would be the demolition costs of this building? And second, how much are we, would, would, will we be savings in space leasing by consolidating offices in that building? Because that would reduce the net effect of this uh, bonding when it, once it gets uh, amortized. So I don't know if anybody can answer that or, okay, thank you. When I think of Farmington, do I think of the town hall as an iconic landmark? No, it's ugly. There are places in Farmington where you have traditional town greens, you have a beautiful town hall, government center. What defines Farmington, Farmington is that 1928 building. Where I come from in Maine, along one of the main river, major rivers in, in, in Maine, nothing but textile mills, 150 year old. They could have torn them down, 
but rather they had a combination of private and public partnership that spent well over $100 million repurposing old textile mills into quaint shops and apartments, condominiums, restaurants. If a small, not so affluent mill town in Maine can spend that kind of money, I should think here in Farmington, we should be able to preserve an iconic landmark. That said, let's discuss financing real quickly. It would be foolish to pass up on $7 million of use it or lose it funds, right? I mean, if you don't use it for this, whatever useful purpose is there. On the other hand, personally, I have a difficult time with the, with use of ARPA. You have to look at the history of it. The Congress passed on a party line vote, $2 trillion of funding, which has led to the largest inflation in 40 years. <laughs> All of that $2 trillion was borrowed, added to the national debt. And all of that will be passed on to our children and grandchildren. They will never, ever reach our standard of living because of reckless spending in Washington, D.C. So I'm having a difficult time reconciling my support for this project with the use of ARPA funds, which, which I believe um, never should have been passed in the first place. So in summary, I support the project. I have some reservations about ARPA. It would be foolish not to use it, but I think the residents of Farmington have to keep in mind what sacrifice the American public and our future generations are making in using these funds multiplied 300 times, 300,000 times across the country. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You want to come up? I can't. Uh, the demolition, again, about $500,000. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Hello, everyone. Um, it's nice to see you uh, here tonight. My name is Tim Labouthier. I live in Unionville. <clears throat> I am a lifelong resident as well as my parents and family of Unionville uh, and Farmington. <clears throat> and um, I just wanted to say a few words. I, I um, have made my uh, support of this project known to basically everyone, but I wanted to come tonight and just spend a few more minutes um, to, uh, to talk a little bit about why I think this project is important for us. Um, Jerry, thank you for your wonderful words. I, many of your your thoughts were the thoughts that I was going to go. So, my my talk will be a little cheap, uh, a little a little bit um, a little bit less. But anyway, um, you know, I, I've interested. I've listened to the folks that oppose the project, and I understand about the financial considerations that we all have. And certainly, um, I think that everyone who worked on this budget um, had done a fantastic job because all of us who do personal budgets for our own and uh, if we're lucky enough to have a job where we have to do someone else's budget we know how difficult that is uh, coming in um, at zero expenses in a, in a budget with millions and millions of dollars is a really difficult uh, process and I just commend everyone I know there were a lot of people uh, beyond this that worked at the uh, work at the, the town hall that had to make sacrifices for this budget and uh, for those of us who work on budgets, um, we know that. So um, I just commend all of you for the work that you've done, um, and it's a it's a good budget. Um, I think when it comes to the 1928 building, I think we have to, like any other thing in our life, right? We have to say, well, is this a good investment? Is this a good idea? You know, what? Why do we really need to do this? And I think this project and and the committee who worked so hard um, kind of proved that to us. Um, I mean, we look at this project and we know. Um, Let's say it's a pretty solid building, right? It's been around for 95 years. 
it's uh, withstood the test of time. And we know they don't make them like that anymore. Towns across the city and the nation um, are rehabbing classical architecture. We know that this works for everybody else. We know it has worked here for us as well. A lot of time and effort has been put into the renovation and I commend the architectural firm as well. Um, I know they've been working with the original blueprints. They really have taken to heart this building. They understand its soul and its bones. And I really believe that they have a project they put together that's been uh, really impressive. And you could see that by the presentation. The, the building itself, you know, what will it do for us, right? So I, I, I look at the plan and I think, and I envision all of us using this new town hall uh, in a few years. And um, it's got accessible parking and it'll be convenient. And it's got departments that you use the most, the closest to the door. Uh, and it's got great new space. Uh, and we could even play pickleball there. I mean, who wouldn't want that, right? I think it's cost effective. Um, you know, I'm not an expert on finance or costs, but to me, um, you know, when you look at how the creative use of the bonding, when you look at um, how well the particular um, bonding has been put together, and when you look at the costs, I, I know when I got the town letter and it said $45 over five years and such, I, I thought, that can't be right. Um, really? That's all? Um, I mean, for a cost of a couple pizzas and a soda, we're going to be able to get this amazing project. So I, I feel uh, that it's, um, it's something that uh, there's been a lot of, of um, thought put into it, and I appreciate that. Um, in conclusion, uh, people who know me know, for me, all that stuff is important, but nothing, nothing, nothing is more important than the history and the community and the and uh, kind of what this building represents to us. And, and that's why I kind of feel like um, this building and this project is worth saving. Um, it's a place where memories for generations of local families have happened. It's part of the fabric of who we are. Tens of thousands of students have come through here in 95 years. There's um, something special about it uh, and it's worth saving. Um, we know that these buildings, as, as Jerry said, once they're gone, they're gone. Uh, and um, I know there's a famous quote when they were thinking about tearing down Grand Central Station in New York. Someone had said, we're not gonna be remembered for the things we build. We're only gonna be remembered for the things that we tear down. Uh, and it's interesting if you think about it. Um, we have uh, lost many wonderful buildings in uh, this town, and I don't want to dwell on it, but for those of you who remember the original town hall in Unionville, which unfortunately uh, fell to urban renewal uh, uh, in the 1970s, um, that was a really cool building too. I wish we still had it. There's a lot of people that I talk to that miss it. Uh, we do have some wonderful things preserved from it, but it uh, is something that people remember and they regret losing it. And I think we would regret losing this as well. So um, what better way to celebrate our heritage than by making an investment in our community and our children and showing them that preserving our history and the collective experience that we all go through together in our town is worth it. So um, I wanna thank you for your time. I wanna thank you for all of your work. I'm gonna do absolutely everything I possibly can do between now and the 27th to ensure that we preserve this wonderful thing. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, first, I want to thank all the town council and the board of ed and their volunteer time to do doing great things for our town. Um, and we really appreciate, appreciate it. And we're also thanking the uh, administrators for great doing in bringing in zero budget increase, both of you, to accommodate uh, less of a pain to uh, the taxpayers, especially the, those of us who have um, real estate property. In my case, I have three different properties that I'd be paying a little more, but I am here to actually tell you that I'm in support of the uh, renovation of the, uh, um, the old building, the 1928 building, uh, it's a architectural. It's an architectural um, delight. Uh, if, speaking as an economist, if you do a cost-benefit analysis, I can guarantee you the rate of return on this building renovated is going to be very high, because we're talking about 
paying out of pocket in a sense, about 60% of the cost, the rest of it is paid by federal funds. And if you incorporate uh, the use of the building, what is planned for its use and freeing up other spaces for other purposes, the benefit is gonna be much greater than people realize. Uh, more importantly than anything else as the previous gentlemen uh, have stated, and by the way, I forgot to tell you my name, uh, Demetrius Gianaros, uh, 56 uh, Basswood Road. But as the uh, previous uh, gentleman um, uh, indicated, uh, this is one of the buildings, one of the very few buildings in town that stand out as people drive on Route 4. Uh, it is, uh, I, you look up and you really feel proud to be part of this town. Uh, it is a, a building that should be maintained. There's not much on this side of town that, stand, that stands out as, uh, as this particular building, the old high school does. So I'm 100% uh, in favor and I call upon all uh, the town uh, residents to vote in favor. This is a real good long-term investment. Thank you. Thank you. Dana Miller again. Yes, sir. Uh, hi. Um, <clears throat> the questions I addressed you earlier, I'd like you to elaborate on. I'll review a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I do uh, uh, agree with the gentleman earlier about uh, demolishing the building is a bad idea. That was my thought when you decided to demolish most of this high school to build a new high school. That kind of flows with the 70 years of poor planning with one story units instead of going three story every time, then you would have you wouldn't have had used up your full footprint in the existing school as it is now. That's my concern with the new school. So one of my questions is, one, how long do you think it'll be before you run out of room with the new school? And where do you plan to go when that happens? Okay, so those are two questions. As far as the renov renovation of this building or any of the buildings, I think that's a great idea. I think this is a great idea. I like the drawings where they're gonna put in new windows, new insulation. Okay, what I think is bad is renovating it for town spaces. You haven't addressed the issue, where are the kids going when that school now that's being built is not big enough? And it will happen, I promise you that. Just like this school wasn't big enough in the past 70 years, you kept adding on, adding on, adding on. So that's an important question I'd like addressed. I'm all for renovating the building. That, that's beautiful. Whoever the architects and engineers, you did an excellent job. But I think you're renovating it for the wrong reasons. I feel it should be renovated for classrooms because you're going to need them. And like I said, you want to keep all the kids in one area. Now, it's bad enough now that you're demolishing part of this school. You're going to keep the 128, or if you keep the 128, and if you do keep it for classrooms, like I'm suggesting, and then the 900 building, you're probably going to have to tear that down and build a three-story building there for classrooms eventually. So basically what you're going to end up having in the future, this is what I'm foreseeing, instead of having one big building like the school has been for the past 70 years, you're going to have three separate buildings for the students. It's going to, the students are going to have to go from building to building to building. The janitors are going to go from building to building, just like the janitors now have to walk miles and miles every night just to do the repairs and maintenance here. They're still going to have to walk farther. Now they're going to have to walk outdoors to go to another building. Sir, let's see if we can answer your question. I think okay. specifically... My notes reflect uh, when do you and when do we anticipate that the school will run out of room? This is the first one, yes, correct? Yes. And then the second one was, and where will they go? That two parter? Yeah. Yes. Kinda. Okay. So, Board of Ed, any projections, numbers you want to come up? 
answer this man's question and then we'll take other questions or comments. So thank you for your comments. Um, when we went through the whole building process for Farmington High School, we are required to do 10 year enrollment projections. Uh, that determines what the square footage is in Connecticut. If you're going for re any reimbursement of a school facility, they require a, an updated 10 year projection and they use the highest uh, number of those 10 years and they translate that into square footage. So our highest number is, I believe, 2029, and it's 1404, so 1,404 students. So the building is uh, right now being constructed for that number. Uh, we are, I think, around 1,300 now. Um, so we do expect an increase in enrollment, and you are correct that we are seeing increases in enrollment here in Farmington with the housing turnover. Uh, we actually have another ad hoc working right now, just looking at our elementary enrollment and, um, and where that's going in the future. Uh, and obviously that would have an impact on the high school. Right. Uh, another um, element of the high school design it, that we had learned some lessons from this building and how uh, at times we're very limited because of all of the additions that were put on the building over the 70 years, as you talked about. So the new building is very flexible. It has more classrooms, uh, but there are a lot of uh, collaborative spaces that we can utilize, um, even some in the hallways. There are some actual smaller spaces for class courses to be taught, even in the hallways, because we have we'll have a large ha hallway. And um, so I think that the new building is much more flexible to accommodate for increased enrollment if we went over the 1404, but it, the building is being constructed for the highest enrollment projection that we have for the next 10 years. Um, so we think we'll, we'll be able to accommodate it. Now, if we had something extraordinary happen where we had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of additional students at the high school, you know, that would be something we'd be monitoring all along. So every, not only do we do a 10-year enrollment projection, every year we update, given the current number of students we have, we update that enrollment projection, and that's how we determine our budget level. Uh, so if we start to see a trend in the elementary schools that show that we would have an issue, we would, that would be an early indicator. Um, but right now, you know, we're, we're on track for this 1404 right now. Does that answer your question? One of the questions. So what about- Oh, the, if we had to just uh, use additional spaces. Yeah, where are you going to, what, what plans do you have for future? Uh, are you going to use the 900 building for classes or are you going to use the, I thought the 1928 building was going to be used for classes. At least that's what I was told in the beginning of all the planning and even through COVID and even when they finalized the planning, it was still deemed either classrooms or demolish, okay? The, the point of using it for some other purpose was never brought up that from what I was told. Like I said, I think renovating is a great idea and you're getting some federal aid. That's a no brainer, but you're, you're I'm, I, I just got a gut feeling that if you do that for the town offices, you're gonna run out of room with that new school, and then you're gonna have no place to go here for the extra expansion. And I'm not talking just the next 10 years. We gotta think the next 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years, because that's what the poor planning for the past 70 years has created a problem for us since I first moved here in this town. It's, it's very difficult to do projections beyond 10 years, you know, and we do have an outside person doing those projections. They would probably never go beyond the 10 because there are all kinds of factors that yeah. happen. I mean, during COVID, that's a very unique situation we hadn't ever dealt with before. And we're seeing per, uh, enrollment shift a little bit because of housing turnover that I don't think we may have experienced if we didn't have the pandemic. Um, in my, in my um, 
knowledge of the 1928 building, we, we weren't looking at it as a place where students would go if we had higher enrollment. Uh, it, we really believe that the current building is flexible enough to deal with uh, increased enrollment even beyond the 1404, the 1,404. Just to clarify, uh, when we were talking about the renovations of the new high school, uh, we had actually separated the 1928 building from the new construction. So we never discussed putting students in the 1928 building. Discussion was that this building would accommodate the students. And as the superintendent was just saying, for the foreseeable future and what capacity that would be. When we had the high school referendum, we specifically did not decide what the use of the 1928 building would be. That's why we created our 1928 building committee to look at the best use for that. So that's what we did. And it was determined the best use was for the town hall properties. It was never going to be for students, just to clarify. Well, I was told by someone in the town that it was considered as a possibility and just common sense. Through, you got, throughout our discussions, again, that, that you was got, never part of the discussion. You got three buildings. You know, you got the new school that's going up. You got the 900 building, which you haven't okay. said what you're going to do with I'm, that I'm yet. Gonna I apologize, but okay. I will interrupt just for a second. Okay. Um, the purpose of this new structure was some of the things you're discussing that we couldn't do with this current structure. That's why we're building a totally new building. But I appreciate all your thoughts on that. Yeah. So what do you plan to do with the 900 building? And also... When you do, I'm saying long-term, let's think long-term here, okay? I know you can only go 10 years at this point, but long-term, that new school, even with the little variations you said you have, eventually, you're, it's not going to be big enough. So where do you plan to go when that day happens? That's a simple question. I'd the, like a simple I answer. I understand. The discussion tonight is based on the 1928 building. And the answer to the 1928 building is that's going to be used for town hall. On the uh, town's website, you can look at all the plans and the descriptions for the new building of the high school, which includes the 900 wing, uh, wing which will be used for different administrative uses. But that's a separate question from what we're talking about tonight. Tonight's discussion is the 1928, but we'd be more than happy to talk to you at, offline on that because we're trying to just focus on the 1928 tonight. But okay. We can certainly talk about the But other. it is a, a part of the original school that you're changing. So the point I'm trying, I feel it's important whether you want to just address it to town space or not. It's good to have town space if you need it, yes. But my question I stated earlier is at the meetings for the school, they wanted to keep the students in one section. And yeah, when that students, new school, school is not big enough, then you're going to have to move building. them to either the 900 building or some other building or make another building somewhere. All I'm saying is you only they wanted the land here for school. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I, I appreciate and that. And now if you utilize that for other purposes, when the day comes that that new school is not big enough for the students, okay? then you've utilized the 900 building for other spaces. This 1928, if it passes, you're using that for another purpose. Where are the kids going to go? They don't want to relocate them to another part of town. That was stated during one of the meetings for the, I, for the school. So sir, please answer that question. I, I think It's a simple question. Where I, are the kids going to go? Can you please answer that? Where are the kids huh? going to go? Yeah, when that new building is not big enough. Well, we haven't heard any What buildings are you going to put the kids in? So, so I'm the moderator. Please don't talk over me. The, the thing you have to recognize is we have projections about the population. The current school looks like it'll accommodate it. For about 10 years, well, he said. That's a good enough answer for me. And your other points about the use of the building, we understand those points. I think if you have something new to offer, to this discussion i would just like an answer what ideas do they have planned for think 20 years 30 years when that school is not big enough i don't think there's any evidence yet that you've offered that it'll be it'll be uh undersized so 
Let's not project well, to 50 years or 100 years. In the I past, probably won't be around. Maybe moderator for another two or three. Well, but, I hope you are. You're a great moderator. Well, I remember you. you, kind of you I remember you from the past I think we 40 years. <laughs> you've raised some good issues about the future. I think everyone has heard it. Now, if there's something else, a question. I don't they have a response and answer. Um, sir, I'm going to ask you to get away from the microphone in a moment. I've given you an answer. Yeah. I'm going to be impolite. If there's somebody else that wants to. And the gentleman earlier had a good point, you know, why tear down a good building, okay. but yet you're tearing down a good school. Instead, you could have just renovated part of it at a time and brought it all up to three stories and right. you, you would have plenty of footprint right here where the existing school it, is. Instead of a filibuster though, right now, why don't I give someone else an opportunity okay. to speak? You've right, spoken now twice fully. I'd like a, a response sooner okay. or later if you can't give it to me today. Where okay. are you going? Deal. you got to have future plans. Right. Thank you very not much. Not just 10 years. Yes, sir. I, I am Barry Aguado. I, li I live in 36 Westview Terrace, right down the street from Jerry. And we've talked about this a lot, me and him. We're both for it. And one, one of the things that, that I think about is, is that if they do tear down this building, you know, which which we don't, we hope that they don't do, or or, or make that happen. I, I feel that eventually they're going to have to build a new building for the town hall because it's too small, and that's going to be much more costly than than the seven million dollars. Could be a hundred and fifty million dollars for like. So that that's the point that I just want to put out there for people to think about. That you do something now, and and you say you could be saving a lot of money for the future. And they're, they're also using, uh, they're, they're creating a, a gymnasium for the, for the, for the, for the you know, for the, uh, the people, for the community. And I think that's another interesting idea. And maybe a lot of, lot of events will happen in there for, for everybody. And that, that should be thought about as well to all the people in the town. So I believe that the townspeople should vote, vote to save the building and reuse it and renovate it for the town hall. I'm done. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Your name, address, please. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jamie Johnson. I live at 17 Cope Farms Road. Um, I'm so glad I came tonight. I am obviously unprepared with my notes, which makes me a little bit uncomfortable. And as Kathy Greeter knows, I'm more used to talking with first and second graders than um, adults. <laughs> but I just wanted to say I am wholeheartedly in favor of restoring and keeping the 1928 building. I can't imagine driving on Route 4 past this location and not seeing that building at the top of the hill. It is iconic. It really is. Um, I think it'd be a big mistake to take it down. And as the previous gentleman said, we already know the town hall is too small for the people that are there. So it probably won't be too long before something is brought up saying we need a new town hall if we do demolish this building. So I would just encourage everybody here who is in agreement with what I'm saying and what many of the other speakers are saying, please sp spread the word. Because as Jerry said, it's if it doesn't pass, it's coming down and there's no going back. So please think about what each of those other speakers said about preserving this landmark and spread the word, please. It's important. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, Pierre Gurton again, uh, 12 Henley Commons. Um, you know, I appreciate all the comments of those this evening, obviously for those of us who've lived in town for a number of years and many here longer than I, um, we've had, you know, obviously the original 1928 building is kind of this iconic structure up on the hill. And while I can appreciate that, um, as many of you know, as, as I've spoken at these town meetings before on various issues and have generally been supportive of almost every specific budget and or referendum that's come forward, I tend to take a look at this from the number side. And I do believe that that's important and should be part of the decision. You know, for those of us in, that are, you know, uh, enamored with the 1928 building, we should have had the discussion about renovating it for the high school. 
Okay, but we we all made a decision guided by architects that it was not feasible, it was too expensive. Now we want to spend the money to convert it to something it wasn't built for. Okay, now it's somewhat illogical. Okay, um, and while I understand it sits up at the hill, you know, in a way, I, I kind of would like to think that our $150 million new high school can be and should be something I iconic and something that should make us proud, okay? Um, gentleman earlier didn't get a particularly good answer to his question. Fairness is probably a question that's not able to be answered, but I have a concern. The, the high school campus should be the high school campus, okay? Security concerns today, we would never draw up town hall where it exists in the high school to be that close. And now we wanna move it up on the hill Okay, literally a tennis ball throw from the tennis courts, okay, for security purposes. And then as the earlier speaker spoke, we are really restricting our flexibility on that high school campus for the needs for an indefinite future. Many of us cannot begin to project with any degree of, of certainty. However, it's, it's likely we're going to be reality that something's gonna to need to be done there and we are gonna be fixed out. People have spoke earlier about the fact that, well, we didn't do this and we had to go build a police station somewhere else and a rec facility somewhere else. There are certain activities that are incompatible. Police station should never have been part of town hall, okay? And, you know, candidly, I understand we're gonna save the basketball court in that space, to put a, a basketball court in town hall, but it's incompatible. Okay, um, I guess just to cover a couple things on the finance side, um, you know, I go to town hall, it's not the best looking building, but that's not the way I define whether that's the town I wanna live in. If I can go into town hall and get my activities and my needs met, I would venture to say that probably less than 5% of us regularly go to town hall. How many of us go to town hall and say, geez, that was a bear, there was no place to park. I couldn't find the office. Geez, if I had a new one, this would be much better for me. It's a little crowded right now because the superintendent and her central staff is in there, but they're gonna move to the 900 wing after a $6 million rehab of that building. And what, what I struggle with is we're gonna spend another, okay, 16 or $22 million for office buildings. When post pandemic, there's gonna be office space, there is office space galore. Okay, UTC just bought a building five times bigger than the 1928 building in town for 14 million. Okay, or Hartford Hospital, formerly a UTC building, sorry. So I just asked that folks look at that. We're gonna spend $500,000 per town employee that works out of town hall to move them 750 feet. Okay, and then the last item, somewhat a bit educational, the town presents these bonding items on the basis of whether, how much it's gonna increase our taxes. But what they fail to get into the details on is they take credit for debt that's coming off the books, okay? So for example, that's like saying the mortgage for your house is going down because your car payment is finished. That doesn't, that's not reality. So when we built, when we voted on the new high school, they said in the first five years, the average assessed home would only go up $490. The reality is when all the debt is on the books, it's $550 a year for that $300,000 assessed home, okay? $500, $550, okay? Same thing's happening here. They have reduced what's coming off the books and they're making it look like it's a bargain. There's no way we could have bought a high school for $500 per taxpayer for a five-year period or for the first five years of the budget. So just kind of, keep, and the last item I, I wanna share is that we got all kinds of competing needs. I lived in this town since 1991, replacing the town hall other than the, the Greenbrier or whatever that building was, never been on the capital project. It's never been a need. It hasn't been for the last 10 years. It's not on the capital budget. So here we are, recession, 
inflation, extraordinarily high construction costs, highest interest rates in 15 years, we're going to spend something on it that we never planned to spend on it. We never had a need. But we have a capital budget right here planned for the next five years, 17 million next year. 15 million is deferred heating, ventilation, and upgrades at each of our schools that have been identified for the pandemic, and yet we're still not getting to it. Okay, we could have spent this same 16 million in the ARPA funds to get that done. So these are choices, and, and that's all I'm trying to point out. We'll respect whatever the vote is. I just don't think this is the right project in the right place, notwithstanding, obviously, the nature and the history behind the building. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Good, Good evening, evening, Mr. Moderator. Uh, my name is Bruce Chudwick, Nine Tall Timbers Drive. Um, I want to come down, first of all, thank the building committee for working on this project, the 1928 building. That's what I want to speak to. Um, when I first heard about that and heard about the plans going forward and trying to renovate this for the new town hall, I too was skeptical. I was thinking about the dollars that were involved, thinking about what we need to do to open up the new high school, and maybe we should just wait until that's open and make sure we're done with how much we're going to spend there before we figure out what we're going to do with this building. But after talking with the council chair and other people, um, not just mothballing it was not an option. As we could see, we had to replace some temporary walls in order to secure the building and maybe do something with it later on in the future. So the more I thought about it, um, it, it brought me right back to my days on the town council in the 1990s and 2000s, of which Mr. Hancock had uh, mentioned that uh, we have blown this several times, ladies and gentlemen, in 1993, 94, we had not one, but two opportunities, two referenda back to back, two or three months apart to buy the Greenbrier property, which is across from the restaurant. Uh, we're right in front of the Goddard School now and all the property where Anthology is, that was for sale for $2 million. We could buy all that land and that property, that would have been our town hall. Voters said twice no to that proposal. So it went away. Fast forward eight to 10 years later, we're working on trying to get the police department out of the little town hall because they were just overgrown there. It was not a proper facility for the police department to be in. So we ended up going to a referendum in two, November of 2000, and the voters approved that and the community center that are now handsomely built on, on New Britain Avenue. Um, so that we got through that and made those, those improvements. Then as part of that, process and thought process, we started thinking about the existing town hall. I think the town council almost put together a building committee at that point in time, headed by Jerry Haviland, former town council chairperson, to renovate or expand that building and make it into something that we could be proud of as a town. Tough times economically back then, and that just didn't get any legs at all. We just mothballed that entirely entire process. So it's all simply gone away, but the problem has not gone away. It is not a sufficient town hall for our town employees and our volunteers who volunteer for board and commissions that go there and serve all of us as residents of the town. We need to do something and we need to get this done now. This is an opportunity to save a wonderful building. And as others have indicated, it makes a statement about who we are as the town of Farmington. That's what we need to focus on is that particular issue. There are beautiful town halls in this, in this state that have been converted from, from school buildings, go to Simsbury. Belden School was an elementary school. It's where I grew up. It's now a brown, it's a beautiful brownstone building in the middle of, this, of the town. It is a town hall facilities and holds, I think, the police department as well. So it's not uncommon to have something like that in that situation. You've got Glastonbury took their old um, school and made that into their town hall. The town of Portland did the same thing. It's a common practice and it makes a lot of sense. We are repurposing very good space to be used for all our hardworking employees and Board of Ed members um, in the town. And we should just get this done now. We've been talking about it for 30 years, much of which I've had to live through. And I commend you, Town Council, Building Committee for bringing it forward. I, I ask the voters to support this project. Let's use the ARPA funds and get this project done. In, have a, a building that we can be proud of for our town employees and staff. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard on this question? Mr. 
So one statement and one question. At this point in time, you have no plans for beyond 10 years. And then who do I talk to after this meeting or in the months to come that may have an answer and a possible solution to that situation? Can you do that? Okay. Yep. I think Thank the you. comments. Sometimes and I mean, res and I mean respect. If I raise my no. voice, I'm not mad. I'm just. No, I I'm not taking it yeah. that way. Yeah. And I think your first statement was a good summary of what you said earlier. And I think any of the council members would be willing to talk to you about that or any of the board of ed folks. Yeah. And I think that's a good way to bu button up this evening's meeting because I was going to address that because I felt uncertain that we answered or resolved your question. It may be unresolvable at this time, but. Let me finish up and, and I will get back to you. But any, I think anybody here on the council, any of the folks that you see here are people that you may want to discuss it further with. Thank you. No, thank you. So uh, anybody else, anybody else, anybody else? Okay. Before I accept a motion to adjourn, I have to say something, which is you folks are the super engaged. I, I, I want to thank you for coming out. You've given two hours of your time uh, and these are important issues for our community. And I'm sure you're the pe people that will most definitely be at the polls voting. And uh, so I want to thank you. There were excellent questions this evening. Uh, a number of well, almost all really good and valid points. And that helps us with the dialogue. And so uh, I want to just take that, uh, take a moment to thank you for, for participating this evening. So this is where we button up tonight's meeting. May I please have a motion that this annual town meeting be adjourned to referendum vote on resolutions considered pursuant to the items of the in the annual town meeting notice to be held on Thursday, April 27th, 2023, between the hours of 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. at the polling places indicated in the notice. I'm gonna call for a voice vote. All those in favor of adjourning say aye. Aye. Opposed? Phew. Okay, we're adjourned to the 27th. Thank you, everyone. Good night.